Hey, what's going on guys? Gun Shed here and welcome. So today we're gonna to be talking about boots. And as you'll see, there is a selection of boots behind me. We have the City Adventure 2, which is the boots that I had my accident in. We have my TCXS Speeds and also a pair of City Vortexes. And these are a few different of the boots that I've been wearing since I started riding. So when I first started riding, it must have been about six months into riding, I went to a talk that was held by my local police force. So they had people from various manufacturers and things talking about safety and R&D, sort of race sidecars and the TT, and they were talking about all different elements of bike kit. It was absolutely really interesting evening. And there's various things that I took away from it. And one of those key things is motorcycle boots and what to look at in a motorcycle boot before you buy it. Another thing, and I'll try and find a vi the video I'm referring to, is a video by Dr. John Hines, who was one of the flying doctors at the TT and the Irish Road Races. And if I can find it, I'll put a link down in the description. But what a key taking from both of these is what pretty much saved my leg. Those of you that follow the channel will know that back in May, I had an accident whilst doing an off-roading course on a motorcycle. I came off, the bike landed on my leg, and I ended up breaking my leg in four places. Now, you may be thinking, ooh, that doesn't sound like your boots did a good job, but they did. The overriding consensus from all the medical professionals that dealt with my case was saying I was extremely lucky to be wearing the boots that I was wearing, which were the City Adventure 2s. During the police talk and John Hines' video, they referred to something which is extremely common in motorbike accidents, which is called rabbit foot. And it's basically, you come off, the torsion goes through your ankle, and your foot ends up pointing the wrong way round. And it is very, very common. And the easiest way to protect yourself against that is by wearing boots that have proper ankle protection. Most motorcycle boots on the market tend to have just a plate in the ankle underneath it that, you know, will protect your ankle against impact, which is great. But what they don't do is protect it against torsion. So you will see these boots, as well as having sort of armor around the ankles and things like that, you see this big sort of support around the, just above the ankle. You've got plates in it just below the ankle and a hinge system. These boots, slightly more racy design. Again, you've got big strut going down there, big strut going down there, all properly screwed in and a hinge in there. And the same with these, they're probably about a third of the price of the other two boots. But again, you've got strut there. Sorry, I'm literally trying as hard as I can do to bend that boot and I can't do it. I cannot make it bend over. I really wish before recording this video, I popped over to my dad's and picked up his Daytonas. And the reason is his Daytonas, I can pinch on the back about there and I can literally go like that. And the whole boot goes, whoosh. that is the difference between a good boot and a great boot. Now you might be saying, hang on a minute, adventure touring boots, adventure boots, etc." they're never going to offer the best protection. And you're right, they're not. They are made going to be a mixture of practicality, comfort, and protection. If you want full protection, if you're off-road, you, you want a set of motocross boots. If you're riding on track, things like that, a set of race boots are going to offer you the most protection. Or touring boots, for me, are the best. And there aren't actually very many examples that have this external support on. Both of them are saying, you know, you have you can get rabbit foot. So when you come off your foot basically goes whoosh, like that. You can completely shatter your ankle in the process, dislocate it, break it, whatever. What all these boots have, that plastic strip that comes down the side, you cannot twist the boot at all. It also provides that upright strength. So if I had not been wearing those boots for 200 kilograms that landed on my leg, bent my foot round and shattered my ankle. Breaking in four places sounds bad, but if you think about it, an ankle is a ball and socket joint, isn't it? So it moves around, it flexes, etc. It's so difficult for a doctor or a surgeon to repair it. Most likely outcome is they have to fuse your ankle. So because I was wearing these, what happened is the torsion couldn't make my ankle move these supports move the torsion from my ankle up slightly higher to sort of my lower leg and that's where it broke that energy from that impact and that twisting motion has to go somewhere so it redirects it from the ankle to the lower leg that's where my leg broke the key thing is where my leg broke it's straight bone so for the doctors to repair it all they had to do was screw and plate it if it had been my ankle, they probably would have had to reconstruct it trying to use screws, plates, wire, and that's if they even could do. 
The chances are they probably would have had to fuse my ankle and I wouldn't have had any movement in my ankle. If you're going to buy boots, please, please, and I'm not trying to scare people, think about it. A couple of tips when buying motorcycle boots is a decent motorcycle boot, when you flex the sole, you know, you want a bit of movement so the toes curl upwards. If the toes, if you can curve that toe downwards, the sole downwards, avoid the boot. It's really, really bad if the sole bends downwards. External ankle protection. Okay, you may be paying a little bit more. Can't do that. You're not gonna basically snap your foot off the end of your leg. You might be thinking, well, actually, no, I've got a 400 pound pair of Daytonas. They fit like slippers and they're brilliant. Even up here, I cannot bend the boot at all. There's no sideways movement in it. A pair of Daytonas, you can literally pinch them and the whole boot will just collapse. Now imagine that with your leg inside of it. How much more support do you get from a boot like this? So these are the boots that save my leg. I will do a full review on them, but the other bonus thing, whilst we're talking about crashing in these boots. So when I arrived in hospital and my foot was a little bit wonky and I was in a load of pain and what have you, and the nurses came out with the big shears to cut my bike kit off and she went, I suppose you don't want to cutting your kit off, do you? Which is understandable, you know, bike kit's really expensive. I said, look, do whatever you think is best because at the end of the day, they're the trained professional. I was in a lot of pain, you know, if you have to cut my trousers off and if you have to cut my boots off, fine, so be it. But because the boots opened so well and it went right down to the bottom of my foot, it hurt a lot, but they managed to get my boots off without having to cut them off. So another reason I was really lucky to be wearing the boots I did, because these are still intact and I don't have to go and spend another 250 pounds on a pair of boots. So when you're shopping about boots and things like that, just think about a couple of different things. Do they have a bit of torsion control in them? Can you flex them from side to side? Can you bend the sole the wrong way? Go and have a look at a different pair of boots. If you have what happens to me and your leg goes through torsion, you will regret not buying those. Yes, they are squeaky, the support squeak. These, everyone knows. You can hear me coming from about 100 meters away here. <coughs> and I've tried absolutely everything and it is the ankle support that makes them squeak. They are incredibly noisy, but at the end of the day, these sorts of boots, they will make a difference if you come off. And it's something that a lot of people don't think about. Anyway, I will be doing a review in time of my cities because I've done about a thousand miles on them now. My TCX Gore-Texes, I've done about 12,000 miles in. So it's probably about time I reviewed them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. And I really hope that you actually take a bit of the information forward and it, you consider it when you next make a purchase on boots. Thank you ever so much for watching and take care.